Coffee gin. Sounds delicious, right? But Mika coffee gin is not made with coffee beans, but it is an amazing Japanese gin that is made on a coffee still. This is a gin that truly showcases what Japanese gin is all about. And this one here is also one of my absolute favorite Japanese gins. Let's check it out. Hi guys, and welcome to Hi on Gin. If you think Japan, you immediately think, uh, think about, uh, you know, the long and rich history. You think about their great hospitality and service. You think about their efficiency. You think about their food. You maybe even think about karaoke and maybe even about sake. But you know what? I think that you should also think gin. Because Japanese gin has surprised me again and again with their fine, delicate, laser precise use of different aromatic citrus notes. The last couple of years, Japanese gin has started to conquer the world with the release of gins like Kinobi, Etsu, Roku, Sakurao, Wajin, and so on and so on. And people often ask me where to start if they want to experience what Japanese gin is all about. And therefore I, of all my many favorite Japanese gins, often starts with Nikkei coffee gin because it really showcases how aromatic, how precise, how different and yet familiar Japanese gin can be. And then Nikkei uh, really here showcases the use of some of the unique distilling techniques that you can use when making gin. And yes, I must warn you guys, I will go into some technical or you can say nerdy details about distilling in this episode, which is why, which is why guys, I have made it easy for you to jump to the to a different chapter in this video down here below if the, you know if it becomes too nerdy for you guys. But let's get to it. Nikka Coffee Gin is produced by Nikka Whiskey Distilling Company. And they started, when they started back in 1934, their name was Dai Nippon Kaju meaning the great Japanese juice company, and they were producing apple juice. They did this for a couple of years, but the consumers was complaining over the juice being too cloudy and was returning the juice as unfiltered apple juice wasn't trendy in the 30s, I guess. That would never happen today, right? Instead of wasting the fine juice that they produced and that they got back again and again, they decided to add yeast to the juice to start a fermentation process and then distill it and use it as base alcohol for whiskey. The first whiskey was set into production two years after they started in 1936. The decision was taken and executed by one of their founders, Masataka Takesuru. I hope I pronounce his name right. But uh, he had also uh, graduated in brewing at a young age, and he had some experience in distilling from his days at a distillery in Scotland and from a distilling job in Japan. The first whiskey was launched to the public in 1940. Today, uh, Masataka is recognized as being the father of Japanese gin. In 1963, Nika imported two coffee-type column stills. These type of stills got their name from their Iris inventor and distiller, Aeneas Coffee, that in 1830 patented his modification on the very first and not very efficient column still from 1822. And it became the basis for every column still used ever since. And talking about the still, let me at least try to get technical here just for a minute and at least try to explain how this column stills or this coffee still works. The coffee still is composed of a series of plates or trays. The liquid that you want to distill is fed into the column at roughly the vertical halfway point. The liquid runs down through the trays of the column due to gravity, of course. However, uh, coming up from the bottom here is the, uh, of, the col uh, of the column is a blast of very, very hot steam. And when the steam comes in contact with the liquid, uh, it turns, especially the ethanol, 
you know, the alcohol and the flavor components into steam. As a result, these vapors begin to travel back up through the plates, leaving the water behind or below. So, and so the separation of water on one side here and the alcohol up here and the flavors up here, you know, happens. Uh, to purify the ethanol even more, uh, each tray that the vapor passes when it goes up is slightly cooler than the one beneath. So it becomes cooler and cooler and cooler. And this causes a bit of condensation on the cooler plates and the drops that it creates falls backwards, of course. Uh, only to meet the hot steam that comes from below, which causes it to vaporize again and then go up. And this rapid transformation from liquid to vapor to liquid to vapor happens over and over and over again. The reaction increasingly uh, separates, um, well, of course, water, but also the heavier compounds like the bad fusel oils that some believes gives you headache. And, and, and it, it separates it from the lighter components like the ethanol or the alcohol and some of the flavors as the vapor makes its way uh, up uh, through the, the, the column. As a result, this increases the purity of the spirit. If there are enough trays in place, column, stills, uh, column still distillation can produce spirits with an ABV of over 96%. The still type is often used to, uh, to make whiskey and is not very often seen to make gin. And as a footnote, the world's tallest uh, column still is said to be a lone wolf distillery's 18 meter tall uh, still that holds 60 plates. There you have it. Wow. So Nika Coffee uh, Gin has used the name coffee to underline their heritage. Uh, when they bought these, uh, these coffee stills back in 63 and to underline the rarity of using a coffee still in the production of gin. But there's more to it when they do the gin. The way that they make Nika coffee gin is something like making blended whiskey. First, they distill corn uh, separately, and then they distill malted barley separately in the coffee still. Then, using only corn distillate, Nika steeps and redistills its 11 botanicals in three separate and more traditional pot stills. They divide them up in batches with uh, one batch that contains Japanese citrus, uh, different citruses uh, in one batch, including yusu, kabosu, amanatsu, and shikesar, I guess it's called. In, a, in another one, they have sancho pepper, and in a third um, pot still, they have the more traditional botanicals or gin botanicals like juniper, angelica, coriander, lemon peel, orange peel, and apple juice. And these five resulting components, the corn spirit, the malt spirit, the Japanese citrus spirit, the sancho spirit, and the rest of the botanicals are blended together like whiskey to give a 47% uh, ABV Nikka coffee gin. And Nikka is very, very focused on not just relying on the machines to do uh, you know, the right things and do the magic, but they let their uh, the human touch and their amazing blending capabilities do the trick. And boy, have they nailed it, in my opinion. Their first and unfortunately only gin as, as of now was released in 2017, and it immediately won my heart. My good friend uh, and mentor, Michael Sperling from Inverten at Gin, was the one that introduced me uh, to this gin here at a tasting. And I still thank him for that and many other things. Wow, guys. When we smell this one, you get this very super fragrant, this very, very aromatic lemon smell with a touch of fresh menthol. There is fresh pine notes here and the lemon smells, you know, both warm and precise, a bit sweet, and very aromatic. It's complex and refined as you would imagine only a perfume maker could, could think it. When you taste it again, it's very complex, very unusual. It starts off quite normal uh, with you know, some citrus notes, and then this zesty oils kicks in and elevates the taste of citrus and adds this little extra layer of mint and menthol. Very exotic, very unusual. 
there's a slight warmth and peppery note to it that gives this very long and very pleasant aftertaste. Wow, I simply, simply love it. As a gin and tonic, I think a slightly sweeter tonic like a fever tree Mediterranean tonic and uh, some uh, lime in it is a perfect serve for the citrus, this very refreshing and aromatic drink. So guys, there you have it, a Japanese gin like no other that gives you the same feeling like when you look at a Japanese scarf. It's beautiful, it's precise, it's balanced, and it's very, very well planned and executed. And if you haven't noticed it, this bottle, well, it's getting more and more empty. It's because I love Japanese gin and I love Nikka coffee gin. Until next time.